guys, so this video is definitely a random one, and it's late at night, so I probably look like death warmed over. It's okay. Felt like filming anyway. So as you can surmise by the title of this video, this video is my long and very complicated relationship with high heels. <laughs> Now, most videos that start with that or are titled similar things like that are almost always of the caliber of girls being like, oh, I'm so clumsy. Every time I try to wear heels, I just, I, I fall over and I run in shit and it's all bad and I, I just wear flats for everyone's protection. Yeah, no, this is not one of those. I've never had a problem with that, which is really ironic given I'm like the clumsiest person on earth. Yeah, I, I never really had issue with that for some reason. Go figure. Um, but, getting ahead of myself a bit here. So, my first pair of high heels was for my first communion in second grade, so I would have been seven or eight years old, and they weren't very high heels at that point, per se. But, going from pure flats to any heels, this felt like such a massive grown-up thing, right? I think these heels were only about, like, maybe about this tall. So, I mean, you know, for a kid that age, it's actually pretty sizable, pretty decent heels. Um, they were white patent leather, I remember that much. I forget if they were just the strap across the ankle or if they were T-strap. I forget which one they were, uh, but they were one or the other. They had, like some little, I think, lattice work around the opening where you put your foot in, but, um, they were cute, but, yeah, they went with my first communion dress, all matchy-matchy, beautiful, and my mom made a point of, well, you have to practice walking in them so you won't trip and make an idiot of yourself in church in front of everybody. Thanks for putting that fear in my head as if this socially awkward person wasn't already terrified of such things happening anytime I do anything in front of people. <laughs> but, um, so fine. Uh, probably about, hmm, I forget if it was a few weeks or if it was like a full on month before, she had me start practicing. So I put them on first time and I just cruised around, no problem, no wobbling, no running into things, no tripping, nothing. It was as if I had been wearing them my entire life. It was no big deal. But she was all tripped out over, oh my god, she's natural at it. <laughs> Has she been walking around in my heels behind my back? Like, no kid is that natural at it. Yeah, well, I was, apparently. And I liked it. A lot. Um, partly because I have always, 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 always been very short. Um, I mean, I was... Even tiny little baby, born a little early and everything, I mean, goes without saying. Um, I've always been on the smaller side for my age. Even now, I'm only barely, barely five foot even. I don't know where I gained a half an inch. I had been 4'11 up until this year, so whatever, that's fine. But regardless, it's been very tiny, so something like a prospect of heels is exciting to me. Because it feels like I'm cheating nature in a way that, okay, I may have been given this hand of being super tiny, but here's a life hack to make you slightly less tiny, at least while you wear them. Uh, and having always been the absolute shortest kid in my class, yeah, these heels may have only been an inch or so tall, but that inch or so meant I suddenly wasn't the shortest one there. <laughs> so to me, this was crucial, and it was just like, yeah, I, I'm gonna freaking own these and learn to walk in them like my life freaking depends on it. Um, and I did, but like I said, I didn't really need to practice, it just came second nature to me for whatever the hell reason. But I practice every day anyway, just for the sake of it. <laughs> I even started wearing them um, outside in the front yard on the driveway and stuff, just... A, to break them in a bit, and B, to get used to wearing them on literally any type of surface so that there is no chance of screw-ups no matter what type of train I'd be on. 
even though this was literally just gonna be in a church, but whatever. Whatever. Doesn't matter. I felt the need to practice, so I did. And eventually got to wear, for the dress rehearsals at school, since again, I went to a private Catholic school, so this was all part of it. This wasn't like CCD classes or anything. This was actually part of the school. Um, we had to actually do it in the outfits we were gonna wear there and everything. I, I'm not quite sure why. I have whatever. It was part of the experience. So this was how I found out I was no longer the shortest kid in the class by more of those. I was just like, oh my goodness. I, I just, I need to find an excuse to wear these all the time, always. Um, and my first communion went without a hitch. That was not a problem. And that was even with having to walk up several stairs up to the podium because I did one of the readings at it. And no problems there. None. Actually, it was through practicing for that that I learned to project my voice. Prior to that, I had I had always been a low talker like this. This was about as loud as I got. But like, no joke. No exaggeration. There's video of this. Until they taught me how to project. And I think the first time I did it, virtually everyone there was like, Oh my god, she can talk. <laughs> but, um... um Regardless, yeah, after that day, they, they may or may not have regretted teaching me how to project because I never shut up again. <laughs> As you guys know, I, I don't do quiet anymore. Um, never have again, but regardless. So my first communion came and went, and now I no longer had this excuse to wear these beautiful, wonderful heels that I had grown so accustomed to, and I wanted an excuse to just keep wearing them, so I pretty much begged my mom for anything, any excuse, any nice outfit I would wear, could I wear these with them? Um, because now I was realizing not only does it give me extra height, but it also makes my legs look so grown up, and just, I wanted to wear them all of the time, and she was hesitant about it, but she eventually caved. Probably because I was going to do it anyway, and she knew it, <laughs> but, um, so that was the very, very, very first pair, and that was the Pandora's box of shoes, uh, because from that point onward, every birthday dress, every Christmas dress, every Easter dress that I had to buy a new pair of shoes to match, you better believe they all had heels. So I very quickly amassed my own collection of high heels. I, again, they're on the lower side, but again, for that age, still a decent size. Um, they did start getting slightly progressively taller, and then I started trying to figure out so I have them for all these special occasions. What do I have to do to get something like that in a shoe I could wear to school? <laughs> Which is crazy, because I went to a school with uniforms that were crazily strict. And yet, I found a way to screw the system. <laughs> um, I think it took me a couple years on this one to figure out a way to do it. Uh, but, I started out with a pair of boots, like little ankle booties, that this started, no doubt, my lifelong love of them, I still adore them, uh, I still buy at least a pair of them every freaking year because I'm predictable, but anyway, um, I found this pair, they were brown, I'm not sure if they were leather or suede, I wanna say they were suede, very small heels on these, smaller than the ones I wore to my communion. These were probably only about th this tall of heels, but this was on an everyday shoe, so I mean, you yeah, know, had to be more subtle about it so I wouldn't gain attention. The fact that I was getting around with, uh, away with wearing brown boots with the uniform was already dicey, and yet... I don't think a single teacher ever called me out on it, even though it absolutely broke dress code, because we were only supposed to wear black, white, or navy shoes. No exceptions, nothing else. But I, for some reason, got away with this. I don't know why, and I wore them for like two or three years. No one ever said a thing. Like, adding one more layer to this, they had little embroidered flowers on the sides that, in the middle of each flower, they had little, little light-ups 
but you know the LA gear shoes they're kind of like that um they didn't have them in the soles of the shoes but just those little centers of each flower they lit up little LED lights and ding 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 every time you took a step I thought they were adorable freaking loved those shoes I saw a pair actually very similar to them obviously children's shoes not adult shoes even though I would definitely wear them as an adult if they made them in that size but um just saying, nostalgia's a bitch. But anyway, I saw a pair of them not that long ago. I was like, oh, I kind of want to buy them for my niece. But they don't have them in a size that's appropriate for either one of them. Darn. <laughs> um, anyways. Um, so I got these boots. And I started wearing them every freaking day. Um, I think from that point onward, I was like, yeah, I don't need flats why would I want to wear flats why would I want to wear sneakers I mean you know, I've got these these are clearly clearly superior I think at one point my parents insisted I make sure that I own one pair of flats <clears throat> excuse me to counter all the heels so I got one of those pairs of, like, canvas slip-ons or something that I didn't really like, I didn't really wear, but just, it was enough to appease them. Into letting me wear my little ankle booties every freaking day to school that broke the dress code. Um, <clears throat> when those either got outgrown or, <clears throat> excuse me again, I forget if they were outgrown or if they wore out, or the batteries died on the lights or what happened, I don't really remember. I remember eventually I did have to get another pair and when I did obviously they were not still selling that same pair of boots but I found one better I found black ones this time which okay now this no longer breaks dress code except for the heel which broke dress code but again nobody ever said a thing um, <clears throat> these were essentially beetle boots as far as I was concerned very first pair I ever owned. Um, very low heel on them. Probably lower than they themselves wore them. They had the pointed toe and everything. They had the zipper on the inside. They were great. Freaking great. Um, I loved those shoes. Still do. Um, but it's the very first pair of those that I had ever had. And I was super stoked to have them and start wearing those every day instead. Mind you, with both of these pairs of shoes <coughs> that I was wearing, I still had to do PE, right? So I was running in these things. Um, and this is how I wore out the heels on them so quickly was because I was trying to run in boots. But everybody's like, you're going to fall and break your neck. And I was like, no, I'm not. And I would prove it time and time again that, nope, I am perfectly fine. And my argument, of course, was that if the Beatles could run in boots, I can run in boots, and thankfully it, it was never problematic for me. I don't think I ever wiped out, in all the years of wearing them, I don't think I ever wiped out from trying to run in boots. Stilettos, yes, but boots, no. <laughs> and the stilettos, it was my own damn fault, but anyway, sorry for the itchy eye. But, anywho, so I had to wear these all throughout the gym and everything, and... It's not like we had one set gym teacher. We had a different one every year for some reason. I guess they, like, really hated our school. I don't know. But every year they'd always feel like, those are not gym-appropriate shoes. You need better shoes. And then I would just never do anything about it. And they couldn't really do anything about it either. So they had me just do the class in those shoes. I was like, well, suit yourself then. It is what it is. So, we roll around to 8th grade. Ah, the first year of really high heels, they made me so stupidly happy, because not only did I get high, high heels this year, I mean, we're talking boots with heels this tall now. Um, they were chunky heels, to be fair, they weren't like stilettos, they were chunky heels, but they went up to the knee, and they were black leather, and I loved everything about those boots. And I still, to this day, anytime I see a pair like that that are in my price range, you better believe I freaking buy them. So, <laughs> I at one point had a collection of them. It still kills me that 
many of them got destroyed in our old house, but, um, including my favorite pair of all, but it doesn't matter, but I got a pair of those. Those then became the daily shoes, <laughs> as impractical as they were, but in high school, I did have a gym teacher crack down on that. Yeah, no, you are not wearing those in my class, and I actually did have to get a pair of actual sneakers as much as it pissed me off. And then I found a funny thing. Through all these years, in my formative years of wearing high heels every day, apparently I've discovered the hard way of why you don't let children do that. <laughs> so normally, like your ankle bones would like front half and back half, let's pretend like front half, back half, right? Would be more or less even with each other, correct? Now you let a child whose bones have not fully formed yet wear high heels every day, and the front bone, or front half of the bone, is going to go a little bit to where now your foot is on, like, a permanent point, more or less. And trying to wear a flat at that point, one of two things is going to happen. You're either going to walk around on your toes in those flats, or it's going to hit and be like, ow, 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 ow. Because you can feel it's not hitting right. Congrats, self, you fucked up your ankle bones. <laughs> like, obviously, that's not something that reversed itself. I, I still live with that to this day, and it it's weird. It's a very weird thing. But even so, my obvious solution to this was, well, fuck it. I mean, my, my body clearly wants to wear just heels, so I'm just gonna wear heels. And kept doing so. <laughs> and then, on top of the go-go boots, I ended up with all these very high, chunky platform sandals, like, you know, these. Uh, shit like that. And, um, yeah, these are only clean because they haven't really been worn. But anyway, um, regardless, regardless, yeah, I ended up with this collection of very high heels. They were always chunky, though, because skinny ones, I have a bad habit of leaning back on my heels, and with skinny little stilettos, I will snap those in five minutes. With a chunky heel, they stand at least half a chance at not breaking. It's not a guarantee, but they might not break, <laughs> which is better than I could say for the stiletto. But regardless, um... I did find that the more time went by, the more that the bones in my ankle were starting to bother me. And I could usually ignore it, especially while wearing heels, but like if I were just at home and were walking around barefoot, it would bug me, but nothing would bug me most as trying to walk up or down a flight of stairs. That is where I really feel it and still feel it and just Yep, I still regret it to this day that I screwed up my ankles that way. One is worse than the other, oddly enough. I don't know why. They should be even with each other, but they're not. But even at that point, I was still insistent on wearing heels, and at that point I was probably about... about 20-ish. Um, fast forward a few more years to about 25. All of a sudden... One day, out of the blue, I don't know what the hell happened, I wish I knew what happened, um, I went to put on a pair of heels that were very similar to these, and within half an hour, not even half an hour, my knees were killing me, my hips were killing me, and my lower part of my back was killing me, I was just like, what the hell, and I thought it was a fluke, I didn't even put two and two together about the heels, right? And it wasn't until, like, a few special occasions had gone by of me trying to wear heels on these days and this pain coming back every single time. I'm a little slow on the uptake, what can I tell you? But, um, eventually I figured out it's because the heels. I tested this theory, and yeah, it's definitely because the heels. I feel it more in my lower back and my hips than anywhere else, but the knees do not feel good when I do it. So I figured, well, shit, um, guess I could try wearing flats, even though I know how that goes with the whole ankle bone thing, and it just, it's not the same, it's not the same, 
But for a few years in there, I tried to retrain myself thinking maybe I just need to get back into the habit of wearing flats again. Maybe that'll help. It did not help. <laughs> um, so I very slowly started trying to integrate really low heels and seeing what I could tolerate and then slightly bigger ones, see what I could tolerate. Um, and it got to where if I like popped a Tylenol or two before putting them on little bit before. I can wear any heels still, but if I don't take any kind of painkiller, yeah, all bets are off. And odds are, if you see me in a photo with high heels on like that, odds are I only wore them for the photo and I kicked them right off as soon as it was over. Uh, so, you know, there's that. But, um, it's very frustrating because, again, being so short, It'd be quite nice to be able to have that added height, not to mention it makes your legs look skinnier and more toned than they actually are, it lifts your butt naturally, and just everything about high heels. I freaking love it, and I love the aesthetic. I may have a tiny slight kink for it, I don't know, but just huge fan of high heels and the way they make your legs look. And yet, for as much as I love them, my body does not seem to love them, or the shoes don't seem to love my body. I don't know. I don't know. They don't seem to play so nice anymore, and it makes me really sad. Because I heard people say over and over, yeah, I'm going to be able to tell you exactly what age you'll be when you won't be able to wear those anymore. And I always called bullshit. I was like, I will be wearing these when I am 90. And now I'm like, guess not. But, um, I, I do try to wear things like these, again, using that example. Um... It just doesn't last long for me, even if I'm sitting down with them on, not even putting weight on them. I find it happens, and it's really frustrating. I don't know, I'm like, I can't be the only one this has ever happened to, and I don't know if the pain in my other joints is also stemming from the weird bone shape thing that happened, or if that's like its own separate thing, I don't know. But it's very frustrating and very saddening, because <laughs> it's just like, I miss my high heels. I miss them so much. Um, I have a bunch of boots with lower heels now that, depending on my pain tolerance level on any given day, sometimes I can get away with wearing those. Sometimes I cannot. So it just, it's luck of the draw. And that is about where we're at right now. So it just, it's very complicated because I love them. I love them an awful lot. Out of all accessories, they're possibly my favorite one. And yet my joints are like noping right out of here on these. It's like, no, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm looking over at my boots and just feeling sad. I mean, in some instances, it's a bit of a blessing in disguise. Because I had this one pair of shoes when I was a teenager that I referred to as my Anne Margaret shoes. They look like the ones she wore in the champagne scene of Tommy. They're strappy sandals with heels that are about this freaking tall. They kind of look like stripper shoes, not gonna lie. But, um, I wore these damn things both times I went and saw The Who. And did not think this through, that at the Shoreline Amphitheater, how long of a walk that is to and from the freaking parking lot. <sighs> You live and learn. But, um, my feet were so blistered that they were bleeding both times by the time I got back to the car, and it was terrible, and I don't think I ever wore them again after that. And I had forgotten about them entirely until a friend of mine actually just asked about them, like, a few months ago. And I was like, you know what? I actually do still have those, and I don't even know why, given I don't wear them. She was like, can I have them? I was like, I don't think you want them. They're kind of like, ripped up and scuffed all hell, I mean, I suppose you could, but I wouldn't recommend it, also, they're really uncomfortable, so, but, oh my god, like, at least not being able to wear the super high heels anymore, it does spare me things like that from happening anymore, but at the same time, I'm just like, I miss being able to, like, life hack my way into being a little bit taller, I miss my legs looking awesome, just, <laughs> and they make every outfit look classier, even if it's a totally casual outfit. It just, it's an automatic thing. Doesn't matter what kind of heel it is. Doesn't matter what kind of shoe it's on. 
just helps. And I can't wear them. <laughs> Story of my life. Anyways, it's late. I'd like to go to bed. You can tell how red my eyes are getting because I'm getting so sleepy. I need to go wash this makeup off and go to sleep. Whether or not this will go up tonight or tomorrow, I don't know. But, um, anyways, you guys know what to do. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you're not already and you'd like to be, click subscribe. Hit that notification bell icon so you never miss an upload. Leave comments down below. Have any of you guys had any high heel horror stories, be them of the clumsy type, be them of my type, or any other type, let me know down below, as well as anything else you feel like leaving me. Make sure you're following my social media accounts, they're all listed down below, and if you like what I do here on this channel and you'd like to help support it, the donation link, as always, is down in the description. So anyway guys, I'm gonna go, so.